Welcome to Fox 18 Sports Sunday. We are here with former Iowa and NFL lineman Julian Vandervelde. It's been a while since you've been on the show. How are yeah. things, man? How's the summer the, or the winter, I should say? How that, how's that been treating you? Uh, long, far long. too long. Uh, but it's been treating us pretty well. You know, I've got my, uh, my winter coat on, this thin layer of blubber that I seem to get like a whale or a walrus every year. But uh, for the most part, I'm just glad that the weather's finally starting to break for us. Yeah, absolutely. It's always uh, exciting. This time of year in the Midwest, especially when things mm -hmm. start to get just a little bit better, that's always nice. And uh, certainly some things to look forward to. The NFL Draft yes. coming to Rock Island. It's right around the corner, April 25th. The course is when the NFL Draft gets going. That's in Nashville, and one pick is going to be made right here in Rock Island. Your thoughts, Julian, on just uh, bringing the draft to the QC, uh, getting a pick here, that's pretty cool. It's about time, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you think about the history of the NFL and, and the part that Rock Island played in it. Uh, you know, I think it's been a long time coming. And I'm a little disappointed that it's only one pick, to be honest with you. But uh, that's the local in me, uh, I guess, you know, being a little bit greedy from that perspective. But it's still really cool that, you know, we're going to get that sort of recognition and probably a little bit of history of the NFL that a lot of people don't know they're going to learn a little bit about. Yeah, going off of that, I mean, uh, you mentioned you're a local guy, Davenport Central, went to Iowa as well, so people around here are certainly familiar with you. Uh, were you aware of the football history growing up? Uh, mm -hmm. Did you kind of know all about Douglas Park and the Rock Island Independence, or is it something that grew? You know, tell us about that. That really came into my knowledge base later. I didn't even start watching football until I was a little bit older. I didn't start playing it uh, for a while. Um, so as far as, like, the history of the game, I wasn't as aware of it until I got into the NFL. Um, you know, and at that point, I was just an Iowa fan, uh, you know, and an Iowa player until I got to that level. And then I started to kind of learn more about uh, the game and the history of the league and everything. And, uh, and Rock Island came into it, and the first time I saw that, it just kind of blew my mind because I had no idea that I'd been living across the river from <laughs> basically the, the, you know, the starting point, the origins of the NFL my whole life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy stuff uh, to imagine that, you know, the humble beginnings of the <laughs> NFL and, you know, having its roots right here in the Midwest. Yeah. It certainly makes that much sense uh, being here in, in Illinois and Iowa. But you obviously went on to have a great career with the Hawkeyes and then in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles, a uh, fifth round selection in 2011. Walk me through your draft day experience from beginning to end. What was it like, <laughs> the ups and the downs? And I'm sure it's just a wave of emotions. Yeah, we, uh, I remember watching the first day just knowing nothing was going to happen and uh, getting to that second day and uh, kind of isolating you know myself in my house with my immediate family um, and not really sure what was going to happen you know there's there's so much that goes into it with like the politics of it and teams you know pretending they're going to take one guy so that some other team will take him so that they can free up a spot for somebody else and you know you get phone calls from a bunch of different places you know saying well we think we're going to pick you here we think we're going to pick you there uh, and things can change at the drop of a hat if somebody's available at a certain place that they didn't think was going to be. Um, I got the call uh, about three picks ahead of mine um, you know, from my agent. He's like, listen, there's you know, these four teams in a row. Uh, we think one of them is going to pick you. Um, and so I was just kind of on the edge of my seat at that point. And sure enough, two picks later, he called me up and said, hey, the Eagles are going to take you. Um, you know, get ready for a phone call from the GM. And uh, and it was a very exciting time. I'd gone out to visit Philadelphia, so I felt pretty comfortable uh, with the coaching staff and in the locker room and uh, at the practice facility. Um, and then it was just kind of a challenge finding an Eagles hat. We don't, <laughs> yeah. we don't really, you know, around here it's Bears and Packers. That's pretty much all you right. have to choose from. <laughs> Uh, so driving around the Quad Cities from sporting goods store to sporting goods store trying to find, uh, you know, one Philadelphia Eagles hat was kind of a challenge. And I didn't realize how many Cowboys fans I knew until I'd been drafted by the Eagles. And all of a sudden they started coming out of the woodworks like, oh, Eagles, boo, boo. I'm like, what do you, I've known you my whole life. How has this never been a thing before? But it was a good time, a good day I'll always remember. Going off of that, I mean, that moment where you got the phone call, I'm sure that in itself uh, was certainly exciting, but then also just hearing your name being called. Mm -hmm. uh, walk me through that specific moment. What was that like for you, and did it, did it sink in right away, or was it something that took a little it's, bit of time? It's definitely very surreal to, uh, to get that phone call, to see you know, your name go up on the screen and, you know, and hear, the, you know, hear them call you out on TV and everything, and then they show your highlights. and. Uh, immediately, of course, they start, you know, picking you apart, like, these are the things he does well, this is the things he doesn't do well, and blah, 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 right. and you just, you know, you get, but you can't focus on any of that, because at that point, I was just so 
I mean, I was in a fog, right? Like, I can't believe it. You know, this is really happening. And, uh, of course, surrounded by my family, that was the best place for me to be because I was able to just kind of, uh, you know, share that special moment with the people who had, uh, you know, stuck with me and been with me through the whole process. Um, you know, the, your support network is so important uh, growing up in that football lifestyle, and it's not an easy thing to do, but you got to have good people around you, and I was glad to have them all there for me on that day. So I'm sure that's some advice you would bestow on on current and and future athletes as well. So we'll kind of delve into that a little bit. I mean, did you receive any advice ahead of draft day of, you know, what's the best way to go about it and what to expect? And, you know, on the other side, what kind of advice would you give uh, to current athletes uh, entering the draft? Uh, The only advice that I really got was to keep your phone on. Uh, They said make sure that your phone is charged. Don't want to miss that phone call. And it's next to you, yeah, and the ringer is on. They're like, you do not want to, you know, screw something up just because you're you forgot to charge your phone the night before or something like that. Uh, so that was really the only piece of advice that I got. Um, you know, my advice to, to other guys who are kind of stepping into that uh, position is uh, just to relish the moment, you know, savor it. You, it's one of those things where uh, you get one shot at it and, you know, when it happens, uh, it's not like anything else. Uh, you know, it's not like getting a call from, uh, you know, a job interview at, uh, you know, at somewhere to, uh, you know, to tell you that you got the job. Uh, because it's a different kind of competition than an interview, you know, than just a regular job interview. It's a different uh, kind of work than, you know, uh, an office job or something. Um, And you want to take that moment in and really relish every bit of it uh, because it's like the next day, right? You're on an airplane, you're flying out to wherever, you're starting workouts, you're getting fitted for pads and on uniforms and all this stuff, and you're a rookie again. You went from the top of the college pyramid to the bottom of the professional ranks. Uh, and you've got to prove yourself all over again. So you just got to, it's like winning a big game. You know, you have about 24 hours to really enjoy it. And then it's time to get back to work. And you talked about, you know, being with family and things like that. Uh, a lot of first round selections, uh, they want to be there to mm-hmm. go on to stage. But a lot of the other guys, I mean, would you say being around your closest family was the best part of that whole thing to kind of share that with all of them? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, the only other place that I can think uh, that I might have wanted to be was around my coaches and teammates, uh, right? Because they are your family at that point, uh, at least at Iowa, that was the way that it was. So, um, but you know, you, you don't, I understand the guys going to New York, that's a cool thing. A lot of them do take their parents with them, uh, right? But if you're not going to go there, uh, you know, you've got to, there's, there's something about it where it's such a community thing. It's such a group and a family thing. It's not just you being, you know, drafted to the NFL. You're taking the hopes and dreams of your community with you to a certain extent. Uh, so you want to be surrounded by those people. Yeah, it's an accomplishment for you, but also, like you said, it it really does extend to that support base. So that's always uh, great stuff. And, of course, several Hawkeyes entering the NFL draft Mm -hmm. this year. So we will get Julian's thoughts on those prospects coming up right after the break. Stay tuned. 